Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Easy Chicken Enchiladas. That's right, we are stacking instead of rolling, since I thought that would make these chicken enchiladas a little quicker and easier. But as it turns out, it really didn't, and they basically took exactly the same amount of time. And by same, I actually mean probably a little longer. But forget all that. The real purpose of this video is to show you how simple it is to make your own homemade enchilada sauce which is gonna be significantly more delicious than anything you're gonna find at the store. And to get started with that, what we're gonna do is melt some butter in some olive oil over medium heat. And by the way, if you wanna use one or the other, go ahead. But I like to use both. And once that's melted, we'll go ahead and toss in some roughly diced onion, along with a generous pinch of salt. And we will cook that for about four or five minutes, or until our smallest pieces of onions just start to turn golden brown. And basically, we're shooting for something that looks like this. And then what we'll do as soon as that happens is make a roux, but not just any roux, a spiced roux, which means we're gonna to toss in some flour as usual, but then we're also gonna add some chili powder, in my case, ancho, as well as some ground cumin, which in my opinion is one of the most underrated spices in the world. But anyway, we will continue on with some chipotle, as well as some freshly ground black pepper, plus a nice big pinch of dry oregano. And then of course, a few shakes of cayenne never hurts. And then finally, last but not least, a technically optional, but for me critically important, very small pinch of cinnamon. All right, if you're scared, don't put it, but I really do think it does wonderful things here. And also, never cook scared. Okay, it's a proven fact that food can sense fear. But either way, we're gonna stir our flour and spices into our butter and onion mixture. And we'll go ahead and cook that for about three or four minutes to not only take that raw starchy edge off the flour, but also to kind of toast and wake up our spices. And then what we'll do once we think our roux is cooked long enough is go ahead and toss in some finely minced garlic, as well as a few tablespoons of tomato paste. And we'll go ahead and stir that in. And fair warning, it is definitely going to clump up, but nothing to be concerned about. All right, just go ahead and stir it in, sort of smearing and pressing it against the bottom of the pan the best you can. And while it would be a little easier to add the tomato paste to the chicken stock we're about to add, I really do think it improves the flavor and maybe even the color if we cook the tomato paste first with the garlic at this point. Okay, it just seems to bring out more of that savory flavor. So we will go ahead and cook that for a few minutes, ignoring the appearance the whole time, at which point we can stop, switch to a whisk, and go ahead and stir in a couple cups of cold chicken broth or stock. And by the way, to avoid lumps, it's very important that this stuff is cold. Okay, as you may have heard me say before, hot roux, cold liquid, no lumps. And that could not be more true. And then besides whisking in our chicken broth, we also wanna crank our heat up to high, because we want to bring this up to a simmer. So that's exactly what I did. And then what we'll do once our mixture does start to bubble is back our heat down to medium low, and we will let this mixture simmer, stirring occasionally for just 10 minutes. Okay, you can go longer if you want, but I'd say 10 minutes is the minimum. And believe it or not, that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and give mine one more stir before, of course, giving it the mandatory taste. And I decided to toss in one more pinch of salt but I should mention, some people like to put in a little splash of vinegar or even a squeeze of half a lime just to add a little extra tanginess to the finish. So if that sounds like something you'd like to do, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the boss of your sauce. But personally, I was thrilled with how mine tasted, including its acidity. So I didn't add anything else. And that's it. Once we've adjusted our seasoning, we are officially done. Although I do like to do one optional step, which is blitz this for a few minutes with my immersion blender. And what that's going to do mostly is puree in all those onions, which is going to make the sauce smoother and also a little bit sweeter. Although the trade-off is it does lighten the color a little bit, which really doesn't bother me. And a lot of that is from air bubbles that will dissipate. And this will actually get darker and deeper as it sits. So like I said, up to you, but I do like to blend this. At which point, this enchilada sauce is now ready to use. So we will go ahead and set that aside and move on to the rest of our components. And of course, if we're making enchiladas, we're gonna need some tortillas, preferably ones made from corn. And because I was gonna stack these, I found some beautiful, cute, small ones. And one thing we're probably gonna to wanna to do first, whether we're stacking or rolling, is brush these very, very lightly with oil, and then toast them in a hot pan for about 30 seconds per side. Okay, we're not trying to brown them or get them crispy. We're just trying to heat them through and make them nice and flexible. And also that oil's gonna insulate the tortilla a little bit so it doesn't get too soft when we bake it with the sauce. And then besides some hot, flexible tortillas, we're also gonna need some cooked shredded chicken, 
and some kind of cheese, in my case, pepper jack, as well as some chopped green onions and cilantro. And by the way, do us all a favor and taste your chicken before you do these. And if it tastes bland or under-seasoned, add a little bit of salt. Okay, so check that out. And then as far as assembly goes, we'll start by putting some sauce down in whatever we're going to bake these in. Then we'll place a tortilla over the top, at which point we'll pile on as much chicken and cheese as we want. And then once that tortilla has been chickened and cheesed, we will top that with some cilantro and green onions. And then finish that layer with a generous drizzling of our sauce. And that's it, we will place and gently press down one more tortilla and repeat the entire process. And if you can, I think it's very cool to cook these in their own individual ramekin or pan like this. But these will also totally work if you do like four or six individual stacks in a bigger casserole dish. And of course, go ahead and build these up as high as you want. Okay, I'm only doing two layers, which is three tortillas. But I'm guessing you could easily do these like five or six layers high. And if you do, send me a picture. But anyway, I went ahead and finished that off with my third tortilla, which we will generously cover with our sauce. And then one last handful of pepper jack cheese. And that's it. That is now ready to finish in the center of a 400 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes or until our cheese is melted and everything is heated through and our sauce is bubbling nicely. And I was so taken with how gorgeous this was that I almost forgot one of our most important rules. If we take something out of the oven that has a handle, we have to place a towel over it so nobody burns themselves. And then as far as garnishing this for service, I'm a fan of a nice big dollop of sour cream, as well as a nice big spoon of guacamole, which I kind of tried to food style a little bit, but unfortunately I don't know how. But one thing I do know how to do is distract people with a shake of cayenne, as well as a sprig of cilantro. And that's it, my easy unrolled chicken enchiladas were done. So I got rid of the towel so I could take a few pictures, and then as soon as I could, went in for a taste. And I'm not gonna lie, I've had and enjoyed enchiladas made with a store-bought sauce. But this homemade stuff, even though it's a very quick and simple recipe, really is significantly better tasting. Oh, and I should mention, a few years ago I was served chicken enchiladas with a spoon, and I really enjoyed the experience. And I decided from then on, I was going to use a spoon to eat enchiladas with, which up until this point worked very well. But for some reason, mostly thanks to a long, crooked piece of chicken, and I guess the shape of the pan, I could not successfully get this bite on the spoon. And in fairness, I should be eating where the tripod is. And I do find the reach around a little bit challenging. So I went ahead and switched to a fork. Because of course with a fork, nothing can go wrong. Whoops. Well, that was unfortunate. Whoops, I just dropped it again. But anyway, I cleaned things up and really focused and eventually got the hang of it. And the point I really should be making is that whether you use a fork or a spoon or a spork or whether these are rolled or stacked is that making your own homemade enchilada sauce from scratch is really easy, relatively quick, and will produce some extraordinarily delicious chicken and cheese enchiladas. And yes, of course, feel free to use shredded beef or pork instead. But no matter what you use, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.